and Father in heaven, today is a new day. This day was never promised to us, and here we are, looking up to you for guidance. With a grateful heart, we come before your throne, for all the mercies and the goodness that you have bestowed upon us uh, during the past week. And as we start this new week, and, and this class, and this new series, we need you because yes. if not, it becomes just words, religious words, and uh, we need to hear from you as you deal with this class, with each and every one. We thank you for the, this young lady that visited us for the first time. And Father, anyone who will come later, if there's any, we ask you that you will please speak to us, talk to us, open our understanding. In Christ's name. Good morning. Okay, we just finished a series on seeking the presence of God. Revive. I, I thought that it was enough uh, for the time being, and we are going to embark in a long, deep study on the tabernacle. Uh, I haven't uh, preached on this, I think, but the last time I did was uh, about three years ago that I preached one message and it was because of the, the Christmas play that we had and I remember it was very, very impacting. If you remember that Sunday was really, really something how the Lord moved during the service. But this is more than just one message. This is long, okay? But it's so rich. You know what rich means, right? Like when you take a piece of flan, flan that is really good flan, or a good piece of cheesecake, it's really well done. Uh, it's rich, right? It sticks in your roof of your mouth, and you try to get it out of there. You know what I mean? And you chew it. Okay. Well, this study is rich, and as you get into it, the deeper that you go into it, the richer it becomes. And uh, enough said. I have a booklet that I need. Or somebody, please go down to where my wife is. Yeah, in the class. Oh, they're here. Great. <laughs> this will cost you a dollar. Okay. But this is, I mean, well prepared, well done with the outlines of my notes concerning this study. If you don't want it, because you don't think that you have a good tape recorder, uh, computer, mine, so you don't have to get it, but it costs, okay, this, to make this, it will cost about six or seven dollars, but we are not making any profit from it, but I believe that uh, I want you to be responsible, so just pass it around, and uh, you don't have to give me the money now. Uh, to our visitor, we're going to give it to her free. As a, as a gift. It's something that will enrich your life. Oh, yes. And uh, you, will look at, you, you, you are going to go have time and you're going to go back and look at it. Thank you. Brother Alex, can I just say that I remember when I was 19 years old when you brought that lesson. And it enriched me so much. To me, that was one of the things that, when I was in your class, helped me so much. That was in the beginning of my walk with God. Yeah, it, so, it was not a class, it was a series of messages. No, no, you had a class on that. Oh, in the okay. English class. Oh, the English class. The English class that I was in oh, that class. Okay, okay. It was such a blessing. All right. Now, today is going to be an introduction, so. I want you to use to pass the pages. And but tell me if, uh, if you understand what you're seeing. Not really. 
probably 80% of, of you will not understand what all that is. This is something that I have painted. No, I didn't paint it, I had it painted. Okay, and this is a picture of the tabernacle in the wilderness when Moses brought the people out that God told them, uh, gave them the design of this place where he was going to meet with the people of Israel. And this is a picture like uh, when you open it, a tent, so you can see what is inside. That's not how the tabernacle looked, because it was covered. But the reason why it's painted this way is like somebody's pushing up, pushing aside the curtains, so you can see the inside. And then it begins here, here, and then we move up to the holy place and the holy of holies, where God's presence was. We're going to deal with the covering. We're going to deal with this right here. Even these things over here. All this has a meaning. Okay. Now somebody say why? Why does it have a meaning? That's why we're going to go to the New Testament, and we're going to see what the writer of the book of Hebrews has to say about the tabernacle, because this is the plan of salvation, complete, in symbols and in types. You know what types are? We have types and antitypes. Anybody knows what antitype is? Types is like a shadow of things to come. Well, a, a, a type is, uh, let's say, let's say this, this is a type, right? Now, the antitype could be Jesus is the water. The antitype is Jesus. So the Old Testament is full of types. Then in the New Testament, you have the antitypes. You find that the type. Why is important? So that's going to be our focus this morning. We're going to start on Hebrews 10. And we are going to read verse 1. So just a quick clarification, the antitype is like the fulfillment of the type. The fulfillment of the type. Okay, verse 1 says, everybody has it? Yes. Okay, for the law. He's talking about the law of Moses and all the ceremonies and they have to do with it. Having a shadow, there he is. A shadow is not a reality, right? All right. We go again. Can you see the shadow? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Old Testament was the shadow. It was not the substance. The substance is this. So, the Old Testament was a shadow of the reality. Who was the reality or what was the reality? Christ, the gospel, and the plan of salvation. Now, in the law we find the what? The shadow of what? Of good things to come good things to come and not the very image of the things see so everything that happened under the law were only shadows the lambs that were sacrificed symbolized Jesus right giving his blood all the ceremony of killing the lambs and the, the, the animals uh, since there were different kinds, kinds of offerings shows us an aspect an aspect of Jesus and what he did all right for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the commerce thereunto perfect now I'm gonna hit a nerve now I'm gonna hit it just like a dentist you know, he starts dealing with you, and he touches an nerve. Okay. If the law of Moses could not make anybody perfect, and there were the shadows of good things to come, and we read here that through the sacrifices and the ceremonies, none of those things could make anybody perfect or complete before the eyes of God. What is that telling you? Use your own. That in the New Testament, it can be made. Because if they couldn't, because the, the blood was the blood of animals, 
well now with the blood of Jesus Christ are going to be in the same condition? No. No. And don't you hear people today in so-called Christian churches telling you over and over again that we cannot stop sinning, that we have to sin, that nobody is perfect? Well, then you are under the law. So you are in the same condition when the animals were sacrificed and they could never get rid of their sin. So in Jesus Christ, it changes. No humanly perfect, but you have to reach the place where in Christ you are perfect because God has done a work in your heart and completed His work concerning the sin in your heart. Okay? Not that you become perfect and you know all things and you're super spiritual. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about anything that has to do with sin in your heart. God has done a work finishing it, finishing it, completing it perfectly. Okay, now that's verse 1, right? Mm -hmm. Now let us jump to verse 9 because this is the introduction this morning. Okay. Then said he, that's Jesus, law. You know what law means? And what behold means? Look. Look. I come. Law. Look. I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he might establish what? The second. The second. That's a good scripture for those people who believe in the Sabbath mm -hmm. and the Old Testament. Take away the first. To establish the what? The second. The second. Okay. So uh, we are reading now on chapter nine. Let's turn our pages to chapter nine. I know this is a little bit boring at the beginning, but I have to lay down a foundation. Okay. It's not boring. It's not boring. Okay. In Hebrews nine, uh, verse one. Now, then verily the first covenant, the first covenant, the first pact mm -hmm. that God made with Moses and the people of Israel had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. This is the worldly sanctuary, the tabernacle. For there was a tabernacle made, right there is the answer. The first wherein was the candlestick, right here. Oh, I forgot my... I have so many pointers, and this morning I forgot what happened. The candlestick. Okay. Um, for there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick, and the table, and the showbread, here. The bread was changed once a week. Okay which is called the sanctuary, okay? And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the Holy of Holies. Right here is the, the veil. You see the veil here? Okay, now the veil was closed all the time and remained closed because behind the veil was the Ark of the Covenant and that's where God spoke to Moses from and the glory of God came. And we're going to deal with all that. But when Jesus died, the veil was what? Torn. Was torn from the top to the bottom. Saying what? Now the way is open to me. Totally and completely. Okay? We're going to deal with that. But we are describing what the New Testament says. This is not Old Testament. This is New Testament. All right. Let us keep reading here now. All right, in the Holy of, uh, of, um, of All, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant, or the Ten Commandments, were inside the, the, ark. the ark. We're going to be dealing with the Ark probably for a whole, a whole month. Just the Ark. Now, and over it the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat. The mercy seat was the covering of the ark, laid in gold, that had to be sprinkled with blood. Why? Because the law inside condemns. 
the law doesn't say it. it condemns. But this is great. I mean, I, I had a need to preach this morning. You know? All right. But the blood was sprinkled on the top. Why? Because even though the law condemns us, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner. I shall not, I shall not commit. Right? The blood of Jesus came and save us from the condemnation of the law. You see how deep this is? I haven't even started yet. I haven't started. What does the staff mean? What? Aaron's staff. What does it mean? Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling the place because it's not important enough. Now, verse 6. Now, when these things were thus ordained, now, Let's say it in English, that we understand. As these things were done, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But unto the second, the Holy of Holies, the high priest went alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying, in other words, the Holy Spirit was saying by this, that the, the priest was doing under the law. Oh yeah, okay? That the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While at the while the first tabernacle was just standing. I know you don't. And we're gonna go into it. What he's saying here is that as long as this thing stayed, what was standing, what was the main the means, nobody had access to God. Directly, somebody had to come and go into the very presence of God, and that was Jesus. To intercede for us. Yes. All right. I'm just touching over here, over. Yes. Okay. Verse nine, which is a figure or a symbol for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Again, they did all that. And you know, how, you know how long it lasted? All that the high priest did once a year, which was the day of uh, atonement. You know how long it lasted? The forgiveness and, and the blessing of God to Israel? One year. So it had to be repeated again. Every year. Jesus came and with one sacrifice, isn't this so sweet? One sacrifice, enough. That's why his sacrifice doesn't have to be repeated. Which goes totally and completely against the teaching of the Catholic Church in the Mass. According to the Catholic Church in the Mass, Jesus dies again. That's why the wine is drunk. Supposedly, Jesus dies again in a symbolic way for our sins. That's why their sins are never removed. But thank God that uh, our high priest is not a pope. And all those popes that die, we were talking the other day, all of them have to have... Uh, all, all the popes are in purgatory, by the way. And every time you hear Mass, means they want to get somebody out of purgatory. We're going to have a Mass for uh, my, my grandfather that died about 20 years ago. Why? Why do they want to do that? They want to see they can take at least a foot out of the purgatory. So they pay for a Mass. If nobody participates, the Mass costs le less money. If they invite a choir to sing, you have a better chance that maybe they take you know, not just the foot, but maybe come to have a leg. If you're talking about flowers and all kind of stuff, then a uh, big thing. The thing is, and somebody was asking me yesterday, so then when a person comes out of purgatory? Never. In the Catholic Church, you pay when you are born, and you pay when you die. <laughs> and after you are dead, you keep paying. It's worth the cemetery. <laughs> To get you out of purgatory. Purgatory, of course, does not exist. It's only hell and heaven. All right. Now, let us hit verse 11. 
But Christ being come, in plain English, but since Jesus has come, as a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Now hold on to your seat. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood, now listen to this. For if the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of a, a heifer, you know what a heifer was? Heifer, I'm sorry, a heifer, you know what a heifer was? You don't understand what these things are, even though I pronounce them wrong. Ask me. A heifer was a cow. Most of the time it was a red cow with, with red hair, okay? Now, uh, where we are? For in the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. You know, the, the flesh, you know, the, the, the bodies, you know, before God. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, purge or cleanse? Your conscience from dead works to serve mm. the living God. Amen. Okay, that's the introduction. Now, any questions? Yeah, no. You said the sacrifices were done once a year? No, the sacrifices. The oh, day yeah. of atonement. What's that? The day of atonement was the most revered and uh, serious and important holiday or uh, feast that the Jews had. They commemorated the deliverance from, from, from Egypt and the high priest was able to enter into the Holy of Holies once a year. Oh, so that's Never ever anybody went in there during the year. That's when he would go Only with Moses the could. Huh? That's when he would go in with the little bells, right? Okay. That was when he was going with the little bells and if he woke and did it wrong, he died. Thank you. Everybody was trembling. A million people were trembling outside. Because if he messed up, they would not have redemption. Can I make a comment real quick? Um, we want questions? No, you don't want to comment? I said we want questions <laughs> okay, and comments. Okay. And you said you want input. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I just, I, I like verse 14 because I feel like it, it's kind of like spitting on, on Jesus by saying, that you have to keep on asking for repentance because then you're just saying he's like, he's no better than Goals. a goat or a cow no, he's in or an animal. Mm -hmm. So That's good. Very good. Now, let us get into the types because this is really the introduction. Types are, number one, divinely ordained. And probably some of these things you don't even have to write down because you have the booklet. Thank you, Brother Pastor. I mean, <laughs> Okay, they are divinely ordained. God ordained it. You remember when Abel was killed by Cain? Will anybody here doesn't know the story of Abel and Cain? Cain. 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 Abel. Abel and Cain, Cain and Abel. I almost said Cain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Cain. 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 The offerings, you remember? Mm -hmm. They offered to God. ¿Te recuerdas de esto, Andira? Cuando Caín mató a Abel, ¿por qué fue que Dios eh, rechazó la ofrenda de, de Caín y aceptó lo de Abel? 
That's a very good question. Why? Some, somebody said, well, he tried to do the, he, the best. But Abel offered to God something from a ground that was already cursed. Cain. 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 I'm sorry. Cain. God said to the ground, you are cursed. So he offered to God mangoes and watermelons and from a ground that had been cursed. And God rejected it. Abel offered a lamb. So God looked and he says, I like and I accept your offering. The Bible said that by faith Abel did it. That's huge. I preached one time a message on that. It's huge. Because he did it by faith. What, what would that say anything to you, Kayla Marie? Sister Kayla Marie? He was, he had a, he had a, a, um, a um, connection with um, God. And what else? That he, would, he listened to him. He had to uh, listen to him to hear. Okay, you're very close. Well, considering that Adam and Eve talked to God, actually saw God, and I guess when they sinned, God separated. So he went by maybe what the parents told them, oh, there's God, you know, even though he, had, he didn't see him. Faith person. comes by what? Hearing. By, hearing. by hearing. By hearing. And hearing by the Word, the Word of God. So somehow Abel knew that the only sacrifice that God would accept would be blood. And we can go back to when God uh, uh, dealt with how? A las diez ya, hermano, la clase. Um, okay, when, when, when Adam and Eve sinned, what did they do to cover their sinfulness? They clothed themselves. They clothed themselves with what? Leaves. With leaves. When God looked upon them, he said, mm -mm. an animal was killed. And they were, they were dressed and clothed with skins. That means that somebody died. Blood is the only thing that will cover you from God because of sin. So it was established from the beginning because blood is life. You follow me now? Yes. And I haven't even entered into this. Okay, so, uh, see. Um, eh, estaba le leyendo aquí en Hebreo uh, sobre la sangre. La sangre, dice que sin sangre no hay redención. No hay, no hay remisión. Ajá, remisión de pecado. De pecado. Ajá. Um, eh, en este caso, en el Antiguo Testamento, el sacerdote no podía entrar hacia... Aquí, en el, el lugar no, santísimo. Okay. Sin sangre. Ajá, sin sangre. Moría inmediatamente. Me tenía que llevar sangre de aquí. Y aquí enseña dos aplicaciones de sangre. Sangre aquí y sangre. ¿Ustedes pueden ver aquí? Sangre. Dos aplicaciones de sangre. Two works of grace. Justification and sanctification. Two rooms. Two rooms. Well, okay. Right. But we're still on, on types. So, when Cain killed his brother, God rejects his offering and, and tells Cain, Why are you so mad? And God said, Go back and do it right. If you do it right, I accept you. Would you think that he would do it? No, he would do it. He wouldn't go back and do it right. He was stubborn, rebellious, jealous, and he would not humble. And that's when he uh, actually killed his brother in anger and jealousy. And uh, uh, the Bible says that when he killed Abel, right there in the book of Hebrews, he says that, oh, and even the book of Genesis, God says, the blood of your brother cries to me. 
And in the book of Hebrews says, we have come to a blood that speaks better things than Abel's. Because the, 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 the blood of Abel, in a sense, was proclaiming to God justice, a revenge with justice. Jesus' blood proclaims mercy, grace and mercy. Can you repeat that? Slow motion. Can we go that one time? Slow. Abel's blood claimed or proclaimed or demanded from God justice. The blood of Jesus speaks mercy, grace, and love, of which we cannot abuse. Now, types are divinely ordained, okay? So that's why we have blood. Types set up the pattern of God's plan of redemption. This is the reason, and this is important, okay? If you think that some of the things I've said are important, this is what I'm going to say now is a key. So please open your ear and your inner ear. And if you have a third one, <laughs> open the two, okay? Listen to what I'm going to say. How do we know that we are saved according to God and that we are not in some kind of religion that believes, you know, this? How can we measure that? What is our safety? Nobody comes with nurses. Come on. Do you mean when we We're first... like you are having you know your safety. Do you mean when we first get up from the altar or no. when we're living? How can we measure, or, or no, measure is not the right word, how can we be sure or that we are, I call it, it's another word, no seal, it's another word, another word, confirm, confirm that you have been saved according to God. In the Bible. Besides the fact that you feel whatever. You know. <laughs> is it by our, our uh, fruits? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good point. But this is the reason. Because if your experience, listen now, and, and don't, don't, don't slide now, because you might slide from the people. <laughs> if your experience does not fit the types, this is how you know. Because we're going to have a walk through all this. That's why types are important in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Well, Jesus used it all the time. Didn't Jesus speak about lambs and goats? Didn't he say my right hand would be the sheep and the left? Wasn't he talking about symbols? Didn't he call King Herod the fox? Tell that old fox. We can go all through the New Testament. You see how Jesus uses types all the time. He uses a tree. He uses a mountain. Right? He uses the, uh, the, 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 the water. He uses oil. He uses all kinds of things as types of His grace, His power, the Holy Spirit. So it should not be something new to us. So our salvation in our lives is in here. In everything that is in here, the only difference is that we don't go back to do it again once a year. No, no. That's the only difference because but the we, 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 our experience had to match what what happened what happened happen. in the Old Testament right. in the shadows. So types um, uh, set up the pattern of God's plan of redemption. Types were fulfilled in Christ's mission to earth. Every type was fulfilled in Christ. Everything here is Christ. In different ways, different manifestations. Our experience must match the types. The type is material, the anti-type is spiritual. Can you get that one? Mm -hmm. The type is material, the anti-type is spiritual. The antitype is higher. You got it? Mm -hmm. The antitype is higher and more glorious. 
to the time. And they fear found them all. Aaron does not typify the Christian minister. Does not typify the Christian ministry for something much higher. Christ, our most high priest. Any questions? You have to have questions. You have. She had a question. I was going to write this down and uh, to thank my brother Jamel because this church was lost and like the prodigal son was found. <laughs> I found that in my office uh, among about seven more charts that I have. And uh, Sister Ivy was able to take a, the first look at it. Mm -hmm. But I was going to write something down this morning because I always, in the blackboard, I always write a thought, right, for the day? Yeah. And this is the thought I was going to write today. The trouble with the world is not that people know so little, but that but they know. No, I'm sorry. The trouble with the world is not that people know so little, but that they know so many things. They are not so. So it's not the little that they know, it's the fact that everything they know, it ain't so. Okay. The trouble with the world is not that the people know so little, but that what they know in so many things, they are not so. They know a lot of stuff. But like somebody said from the country, it ain't so. Mm -hmm. so but it's wrong. Back to what we were discussing, you never got past the question, what confirms our salvation? If you just went off the, the types. Question. So the types of the past, of, of the Old Testament, yes. are what confirm the anti -type. Like if you've gone through the stages. Change. Okay, well, okay, we had to go through this. Mm -hmm. And as we go, in fact, listen, when we enter into the courtyard, right here, it begins to deal with you. And believe me, I can preach this to people that are not saved, and I know they'll get under conviction. Just by preaching about entering here, what it meant to, to come to this place, all of us who are dealing with people that are not saved, we have to bring them here. If we don't bring them here, forget about all this, okay? We have to bring them to the place that they get convicted by their sins, they repent, and they realize that their only hope is in the sacrifice of Christ, and that the blood of Christ will be applied to their hearts in order to be forgiven and to be saved. Everything is just blah, 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 religious stuff. That's why this message here is not preached today. Anywhere. You're going to hear this, you're going to have to come to somebody who is preaching the, the pure gospel. And I'm not saying that I'm the only one, okay? There are many ministers. I hope so, Lord. <laughs> they are preaching it in some places. But this is important. Because I know what this message does. It's so powerful, so deep. And so glorious that in some occasions it's going to be hard for you to hold back your tears. Because you can see the love of God, what He did, and what you have gone through. You never saw it. And you're going to see it. You're going to see it. When we go through this, you say, Oh my, I remember when I came here. Oh my, I remember when I came here. Oh, God, I remember when I got here and what I found here. And, oh, God, I remember when I came to this. Oh, God, see? But this is the guideline for you to be sure that what you have is not a religious something that you have. The real thing. Can you get stuck in one? And, and in a way, like, stuck, get stuck there for, like, a while. 
Be more specific. Okay, can you get stuck like outside? Oh, definitely. You, you can be stuck over here. There's people that I, I know right here now in the congregation stuck over here. They they have been coming to, to service for about maybe two years and they still don't get here. They smell the blood, they see all the sacrifices, they go around the other, uh, 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 <laughs> but they don't come here. And then from there, if you're there, can, can you get stuck there in the water or? If you get this, definitely you're gonna come here. Because, you because the fruit of coming here is this. Mm -hmm. Some of you are looking at me kind of funny. <laughs> this is where you cl get cleans. Water. And then the bottom of this, in case you don't know, is glass. Mirrors. Mirrors. Glass. And, and this is called the sea. A sea. A sea of glass. Okay. It was called in the, New, in the New Testament, the Lavaker. In the book of Titus, it says the, the Lavaker of generation when you get clean. Born again. Born again of what? Born again of what, Jesus said? Water. Of water? Okay. So, okay, we're we'll jumping ahead of us. Brothers, let me ask something and refer to what one saying. The second work of grace, which is the second applying the blood there, so this means that this is salvation to the new soul that comes to Christ. This right okay, here the word is the second, second step. Okay. Salvation is the whole thing. I, I, I want, want, yeah, I'm specific on this, okay? Because sometimes when we are preaching, when, when the preacher is preaching, mm -hmm. and you need to be saved and thank God for salvation, we mean that we have been forgiven, we have been born again, and, and so forth and so on. But when you really go doctrinally, uh, how would I say, um, uh, theo theologically Correct. speaking, mm -hmm. salvation is the whole work, it's, a plan it's the whole apple. And one time I was preaching and I brought an apple and I cut it right in half. Remember you remember that? Yeah. Okay. I cut it in half and I showed it to the congregation. I said, here we have an apple, right? This is salvation. And then I did like this. Oh, split in the middle. Justification and sanctification creates salvation. Because salva the word salvation means, in English, means made whole, complete. That doesn't mean that you are half saved. Please, no. you are as safe as you should going to be, but we need a second work of grace. Okay. So, I mean, look at this. Something more and more. Look at this. And I only touch part of the first page. I thought you were entering into it. Okay, but I. Do ask of you to pray to God, Lord, help my understanding. Help me to understand because your appreciation for God and for truth, even this can affect you in your praying for revival. Because these things become so, oh my, how would I say this, so glorious. And you say, I, I want others to understand it. I want others to see it. This is beautiful. I mean, this is, you know, this is so, so consuming. This is so, 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 so rich. And you will want to say something to somebody. Even to the dog, you don't have nobody else. <laughs> Come here, dog, and I'll have to talk to you. There was time I preached that he didn't have nobody to preach to, and he had a garden, and he would go and preach to the vegetables. <laughs> The tomatoes and the watermelon, and said, You repent of your sins, Jesus did this. And you know, he was so full of God that he had to tell somebody, Nobody would listen. He preached to the, to the, to the, to the vegetables. Anyway, don't we live or have lived in how many of you know that people talk to plants? Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This, this, this apparently helps them. right. 
How, how many of you know that some people talk to plants? How many of you know that plants grow according to the music that they hear? Is it scientifically yeah. true? But why do we understand? But hearing, talking to plants, good morning, honey. Uh, you look beautiful today. You don't see it, right? But it works. Why? Because plants are living organisms. They are not human, of course not. And please don't say, you know, I have a preacher over there and he says that he preaches to plants. I didn't say that. What I'm saying is that this man was so full of God that he was preaching to vegetables. Some people say, that's crazy. Well, there's a lot of people that are crazy today in the world because they sing to plants, they talk to plants, and they have results. Now, you go to a, <laughs> to, to a bush of, of flowers you have in your house, and you say, you ugly thing, you look at that. I can't stand you every morning with the same color. Why don't you do so? Why don't you cook me a sandwich? <laughs> you know, uh, I guarantee you that this is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let us, let us close. I appreciate your, your cooperation. Once again, uh, we were very glad to have you. Okay? Amen. Very glad to have you. Where are you from? Guatemala. Oh, Guatemala. We have several people here in Guatemala. And I have been in Guatemala several times preaching to different places. Beautiful country. Yes. Anyone, please, this is Mr. Prayer. Dear God, thank you for the privilege that it is to be in your house once again. Thank you so much for this class. Thank you so much for these truths that we're able to hear. Help us to never take them for granted and to um, help us to apply it to our lives, God. Please help Brother Alex and his ministry. Thank you so much for his life and for everything yes. that he's taught us up until this point and continues to teach us, God. Please bless him in his life in a special way, God, and be with everyone in this class. I ask you a special blessing for my friend Evelyn, God. Thank you for um, for her for allowing her to be here with us today, God. Please minister to her, whatever she's in need of as well, dear God. And please help us this morning to pay attention in the service and to give you the honor and praise that you deserve, God. We love you and we thank you for your sacrifice and everything that you've done for us in our lives and you continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. I hear people talking. I know, right? We're early. We're early. We're early. Yeah, have a running show. Right? Any, quest one. any questions? To the door. Right. Wait, what was that? that? The yeah. Yeah. It rained for five minutes. The five minutes already. Oh, I thought I, heard, I thought I heard. No questions. Who has a couple questions? Yeah. No questions. Yeah. 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 There it is. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, long time now. Yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't hear it.